Happy Friday, everybody. (laughs) T-G-I-A-L-F. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Cologne Podcast. I'm Mike. And I'm Ryan. And we're just two lovable gents in the state of Texas, giving our uneducated opinion on the world of fragrance. We're beautiful, man. (laughs) I had a friend slash listener say, you guys are way too self-deprecating. I know. They're like, don't say you're stupid. Yeah. Don't (laughs) say you're ugly and dumb. (laughs) They were like, you're beautiful on the inside and out. And also, I live in the state of Texas, and I'm tired of you making us look bad. Yeah. So we just want to let you know, if you're listening, when it comes to men in the state of Texas, we're strong, we're beautiful, but masculine, and highly intelligent. All right. Today's episode, Ryan, is going to be Luna Rosa Ocean by Prada. Yes. Looks sexy. In fact, Mike went out with his own spinachers and purchased this 100 ml bottle. He hasn't even taken it off. Look at this. Oh, yeah. He hasn't even taken it out of the package. No, because we promised the friends of the podcast that we are not going to smell a fragrance. If it's a fragrance we haven't smelled before, yeah. we're going to wait until the episode. You're getting it live, baby. That's right. And if that makes you proud of us... <laughs> And you think, wow, I really want to get behind these guys and keep enabling them to make such high quality content. Check out (laughs) buymeacoffee.com slash cologne podcast. Enable us. Be enablers. Be enablers. (laughs) Don't be like the enablers that Ryan and I are for each other, where one of us goes, man, I really got to get in shape. I really got to get on a diet. And he goes, sweet, I brought cookies. (laughs) You bastard. Give me three. (laughs) All right. When it comes to Lunarosa Ocean, (laughs) Drummer Trauma 11 has something to say. Mm, These names just get dumber by the minute. (laughs) This is from Fragrantica. He says, don't listen to the bullshit. Okay. This stuff is more than exceptional. Test it yourself. Ignore the idiots calling it garbage. (laughs) Wow. So, I mean, apparently this is going to be a polarizing fragrance, Ryan. Well, I'll like it then probably. You probably will. And I'll probably hate it, even though now I have 100 mil of it. (laughs) All right. But before we get into that, let's get into our one night stand review of John Paul Gaudier's Scandal. Scandal, scandal, scandal. scandal. Poor home. Yeah. One night stand review. Okay, Ryan. After hanging out with John Paul all evening. Well, after I saw he was rattling off the same hits he's been clamoring to for the past 16 years, apparently. See, just not impressed anymore. You know what? I think that's where you're wrong. This is definitely different than hey, Lamal. It is. I'll give it that. This is a departure from Lamal. Good or bad, it is different. I'm just going to say that right off the top, it's super sweet. Don't click with it. Smells like 20 different designer fragrances we've smelled before. Yeah. It is a loud fragrance. I think this is an EDT concentration, but it felt pretty strong. It felt like an EDP to me. I mean, it's there, it's loud, but it's just so sweet. I don't know. But when it dried down too, it's like kind of similar, and I'm probably way off, but kind of similar to Ralph's Club in a little bit. It's weird. It, and it's still got like the sweetness to it. Yeah. Whenever I smell it, and maybe I feel like it's like loud or thick or rich, you know, normally I think of Ovaltine, I think <laughs> thick and rich, uh, or me, <laughs> but... Maybe it's because it's so sweet, plus it's got that real powdery. I'm guessing that's in Broxen. I always hear people relating it to that. To me, it was almost like nausea-inducing. Yeah, I agree. A hundred percent agree. I mean, we were getting close to lunchtime, and I lost my appetite, which is a hard <laughs> thing for me to do, Ryan. So, I think it's for some people out there. Is it for me? Absolutely not. No. Never going to spend my money on that. But I think there are people out there that could be interested in that. And if you are... MyFragranceSamples.com has it available. There you go. Sample it and... Sample it. Have fun with it. I'm still sticking by my skip. Okay, I gotta skip it. Yeah. For me, it's a skip. Yeah. Like I said, if you fall into the same demographic that I'm pogo dancing, it's not gonna be for you. Why does this community encourage blind buying? I mean... That- I really am wondering because, like, 
If I blind bought some like this, I'd be really mad that I had to force myself to wear it all the time to get to get use out of it. Oh, dude, I would return it. <laughs> I mean, I would either that or it'd be like somebody's Christmas present or something. <laughs> hey, you're really gonna love this. It was the last box. It was a tester, so that's why it's open. I can't do the blind buy crap, man. Before we knew. Before we knew you could go to myfragrancesamples.com and get such high quality service and products sent right to your door without having to pay for shipping, yeah, I thought the only way you could do it was to blind buy it or smell it in the store where they spray it on some card and they're so stingy half the time they won't make you a little two mil sample. It's pathetic. Dude, it's frustrating. <laughs> it is so frustrating. But now that we found out myfragrancesamples.com has such a wide <laughs> selection, Ryan. Yeah. Take your shirt off, Mike. Turn around. Let me see your back. I swear to God, you better not have a MyFragranceSamples.com tattoo on your back. I've got it, actually. In Old English. <laughs> it's Old English on my stomach. <laughs> I went the Tupac route. <laughs> I would. I mean, all jokes aside, though, for real, though, that's why we clicked so immediately with that website was because it was nice to be able to. And I know that people can also, you can intermingle with each other with that kind of shit. But yeah. it's like... It is nice that there's something that's laid out professionally to just be like, you know what? I want to try that. And then you try it. The ability to try and a lot of there's tons of niche fragrances on there, which would be impossible for us to get our hands on without buying sample sets and or going out. And honestly, the when you buy a sample from the manufacturer, typically it's even more expensive than what Mark has on the website. Yeah. But for us to do this podcast, yeah. it took us a few episodes to kind of learn that. But had Having the option to go out and buy decants or samples, you know, yeah. it kind of changed the game for us, especially. But even those at home, yeah. you guys, where you're not trying, you know, three new fragrances a week, maybe you want to. Yeah. And this is a great way to do it from your own home. It's just a great service. That's why we clicked with it, you know, because it opened up the door for us to not be spending a ton of money. There's also this reciprocity thing that goes on in your brain when somebody labors over letting you sample eight or nine different fragrances at a department store where you almost feel like, oh God, now I got to buy something. I can't leave the store without buying something because they've spent 30 minutes helping us smell this and doing that. Yes, that you're like guilty of that, but also like when you leave leave and we've done this a few times now and you smell a bunch of different stuff it's like as you put in new information into your brain all the other information is being shot out the other side like, <laughs> right then you come out and you're like man what did that one smell like or i can't remember that like you really are kind of confused that's why i'm like yeah because eh. i thought about if i had blind bought something like this and you know there's people out there that will probably recommend hey this is a blind buy grab it smells good and i honestly don't know why people why well, i know why because people want to be able to say positive things and get certain sponsorships probably and and that's why right. we pitch too, that we try to grassroots this as much as possible because yeah. we want to be able to say, hey, no to this. Yeah. We want to be able to tell you guys if we like or don't like a fragrance. And if, you know, John Paul Godier was sponsoring the podcast, we couldn't just completely throw shade all over Scandal. You can't do any tomahawk dunks on that. Man. No. It's just going to be like, <laughs> oh, yeah, you know what? I could see somebody wearing this and really enjoying it. And then, you know, hitting stop on the recorder and going, <laughs> <laughs> Sweet Lord, open a window, you know. To me, having the freedom of not having to shill out some fragrance that we don't believe in, you know, that's yeah. that's a big thing. So, I look at it that way. And then I also look at it also helps you calibrate whether or not you line up with our opinion of fragrances. So, if you get to try them yourself, yeah. then you can go, you know what? I like a lot of the same fragrances that Ryan likes or I like what Mike likes. And so, when we say, oh yeah, this is a definite buy, you yeah. may go, hey, instead of spending 15 bucks on a sample, you know, I'll just buy the bottle for 45 because I know after trying so many of them and liking the same things, you can kind of calibrate your, you know, perspective to see who you line up with or if you even trust us rather than buying buying bottles after somebody else and hitting four or five bottles deep before you realize, oh, me and this guy don't like the same fragrances at all. Yeah. Kind of weird way to look at it, but when it comes down to it, there's a lot of reviewers online and a lot of the times they're looking at full bottles, they're talking about full bottle prices. And I think if you've grown to love the podcast, you understand that we're never really pushing full bottle prices. Most of the time, if we really believe in something, we're like, hey, go to the website, try a sample of it, give you a five mil decant, wear that out of 
few times. And if you really do like it, then hell yeah, buy the bottle. Yeah, even stuff that we really love, I mean, especially expensive stuff, I'm like, for sure, yeah. go out and test it because you never know. So, let's go ahead, Ryan, <laughs> and get into today's fragrance, which is Prada's Luna Rosa Ocean. I am so excited. I'm also excited for the ASMR. Is that what it is? Oh, yeah. Be sexy with it. Okay, here we go. Oh. <laughs> Opening the box now. Oh. Uh, uh, uh. Here comes the bottle run. Oh! <laughs> oh, I like this matte black atomizer. I'm gonna say that's a pretty sexy looking bottle. Wow, although the screen printed red on the bottle is already kind of scuffed. What and this it? came straight from Prada. Wow, it is, it's actually chipped off. Wow, that's kind of. Good thing I didn't pay full retail for this, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, it's even got a batch code on the bottom. No, I'm kidding. Okay. <laughs> that is weird that it's already kind of scuffed up. Yeah, it's cool. I do like that matte black atomizer. The, the bottle actually Not is up. pretty sexy. Yeah, and for those listening, I did pay full retail, so poor bastard. You do it, Ryan. Okay. I did scandal first, and we saw how that ended up. Okay, here we go. Man. Oh, oh shit. shit. My bad. <laughs> Ryan actually said before this, he was like, man, don't hate me, but if I hate this, I'm a rank on it, even though you <laughs> bought a full bottle. And I nearly spit my drink out because I'm like, duh, that's what we're doing here. <laughs> hey, that seriously, though, that does attest to what we're saying and why we want to grassroots things, because I immediately I was like, hey, man, if I don't like this, you're going to be OK with me dunking on this. Yeah, I don't I don't. And he's not even the fucking company. He's he's just the guy who bought the fucking bottle. Bottle. This to me doesn't smell like Luna Rosa anything. It does to me. I smell it. Really? Yeah. No, I'm going to have to give it a second then. It is an interesting smell. It does smell more herbal. I'm fucking loving this. And I'm serious. And I know why already. It's good. It is damn good. This may be along the green side of things that I would actually appreciate. It's like a little bit of that Luna Rosa with a little bit of that shower gel kind of vibe. But then some sort of sweet thing going on too. You know what it may be kind of be is that I know when Luna Rosa carbon dries down, it has like this really like expensive, like sitting inside of a Ferrari smell. Yeah. Almost uh, like a leather, but not really a leather. Yeah. And this is kind of to that point a little bit. Yeah. This this does kind of have, you know, when you kind of mention that, it does have almost like a new car smell to it almost. I'm vibing this. Yeah. Man, what a trip. It's kind of hard to articulate what's going on with it the is. fragrance. And on my skin, it has like the perfect crispiness of masculinity to it to me. I'm kind of glad I have it with the hot weather because I'm sure it's going to kick up a little bit more. It's like a clean... There is something. You were reading somewhere about oceanic notes, which I don't understand what that would even mean. That may be what they're pertaining to, like that shower gel vibe, like water to them, I'm guessing. like I don't know. We have listeners that have highly developed noses <laughs> that are totally into, I mean, they've been in the game for a while and we're still relatively new at this. Yeah. You know, we're going to use definitions wrong and all that jazz. At the same time, we're not trying to appear like we know what the hell we're talking about. Yeah. We're just grasping for like descriptions. Am I crazy? Now, it's not a one-to-one, -one, but there's like a similarity in like that crispy clean. I could see where it'd fit in the same category, but yeah, I don't smell a yeah. similarity. He just pulled out Elysium, by the way. I think he does that just to rub my nose in it. <laughs> it has, it does have a freshness to it that I like. It yeah. does. To me, it's like now that I'm wearing it a little bit, I had to give it a second because when you spray something on, especially like an EDT version of a fragrance, I don't like to like just cram my nose in it right away because I feel like you do hit a bunch of that alcohol. Yeah. But now that I've given it a second to smell it, it reminds me of like a mintier version of Luna Rosa Carbon. It does, man. And Luna Rosa Carbon, we both really like. One thing I'm preferring this over the Luna Rosa Carbon, I enjoy the opening of this much better just because Luna Rosa Carbon kind of opens up very similar to Sauvage. But what I love about Luna Rosa Carbon is that dry down is fucking exotic. Like, it's amazing. Yeah. I, I love Luna Rosa Carbon all the way through. Yeah. 
Man, that's interesting, dude. So on the card, sorry to cut you off. No, go ahead. Go ahead. On the card, I smell a ton of that sort of herbal vibe. Not on the skin so much. On the skin, I'm smelling more Luna Rosa DNA type. I couldn't tell you the way, but I do know the card to me smells a little bit more sweet, minty, I guess. I don't know what the, what the hell I'm smelling, but it smells a little more. Mm. Yeah. So the nose is behind this are Anne Filippo, which is behind Phantom and all that crap. That's kind of weird when I think about it. Isn't it kind of weird that this is like a small market and there's so many like connections? It's like we just smelled something that just came out and they also made this that just came out. They made Phantom for Paco Rabanne. Oh, to give them a break, I would say... It's kind of like us with clients. Yeah. You know, each client is going to have a different direction and inspiration that they want for their product. Yeah. And you really only go about delivering what they're asking for. That's true. And I mean, some of the things we've delivered, we've kind of been like, oh, that wasn't our best work. <laughs> but you're leaving creative direction up to the brand. Yeah. Whereas when we have 100% say on what we deliver, we love it more. So, I think it depends on the brand and their creative direction and what they're yeah. saying. Hey, here's what we want. Well, the other nose behind this is also Carlos Binam or whatever his name is. Sorry, I'm not trying to be rude. I just, I'm bad at pronouncing names. <laughs> but that nose is also behind Armani Code. So, it's like there's some there's some good people behind these that are making this. And this is definitely- I mean, I wouldn't expect anything less from a brand like Prada. Yeah. Man, I'm preferring this card though. The mintiness? Yeah. I'd probably would say on my clothes, this thing is going to smell- Incredible. Phenomenal. This is what I feel like Polo Cologne Intent should have been. Agreed. Man. I, see, I love it on the skin. I love it both. And I'm not one for green, minty, whatever. Same. Herbal. That's not me at all. Here's what everyone's going to say. Well, Mike's a little bit biased because he's $100 deep in that bad boy. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't think so. Yeah. Because, and Lord knows when we'll do an actual episode of it, but I bought a retail bottle of uh, Givenchy's Gentleman, and I fucking hate that fragrance. Really? Yes. I don't know if I've ever smelled it. Man, I thought I was going to love it because when I bought it retail from Dillard's, was Lady it, Spring- Was this in the early phase when you would like hear somebody say, these these are the fucking things that get? Yeah, or? go out and get it. It's yeah. fucking incredible. Yeah. You know, it's the EDP version. And at Dillard's, she sprayed it on the card- and I smelled it and it was like, oh, that smells to me a little bit like Tom Ford's Black Orchid. Yeah. And I was like, man, I'm going to save me a little bit of money and get this. And it reminds me a lot of Black Orchid. But then whenever I sprayed it on the skin, I could not stand it. Yeah. And it's strong iris. Yeah. But it's not done in the way like Dior Home where it's an interesting sort of makeup y. It ended up just feeling like a car crash to me. There was just so much <laughs> going on, you know. Yeah. So I will say that. And we haven't done an episode. It's been on the board for a million years, but we probably will do an episode. And I've already spoiled the fun in that. But letting you know, I'm not afraid to dunk on something I've invested in. Yeah. I'm not just like changing my tune because I just bought this, but I really kind of like the blend on the card with the greener vibe. Yeah. But on the skin, it is very Luna Rosa carbon to me. It is. It's almost. But like a tiny bit cleaner almost. Man, it is sharp. I'm loving this. I do too. This is going to be well blended to where when you spray it on your skin and you have some on your clothes, the difference between what each surface brings out, you know, your clothes or the skin combined together, it's really intriguing. The differences between what's on the card and skin are crazy. It's almost like two polar opposite fragrances, but they both smell really good to me. Yeah. Normally, 56 out of 60 episodes... <laughs> We've done decants through myfragrancesamples.com as opposed to buying a bottle of something. Yeah. But because I absolutely love Luna Rosa Carbon. Yeah. Love it. To me, I was willing to take the risk to buy the flanker to see what it was all about. You don't have to do that. Mark does have Luna Rosa Ocean up on the website, myfragrancesamples.com. You can get yourself a decan of it and try it out. Yeah. I went ahead and pulled the trigger because I really do love that Luna Rosa carbon. It is sexy. And the fact it's so cheap and sexy is ridiculous. Yeah. Well, let's get into this then. What, the trend? It's hard to talk about the trend just because it's peaking now because it's just- Brand new. Yeah. yeah just came out. But I want to get into who's wearing this. <sighs> Here's what I'm thinking. 
Let's dive deep into it. Long hair, slick back, mid thirties, blue jean jacket. This is a bad guy from a John Claude Van Damme movie. Don't do that. You're interrupting my vibe. <laughs> okay, I'll shut up. <laughs> uh, well, now all I'm thinking about is honestly Mickey Rourke from uh, oh, Harley Davidson and the Marlboro Man. <laughs> yeah. Phenomenal movie. You've never seen it. Good God, it is. Just the opening scene is like quintessential cinema. Seriously, guys, just going to just throw this out there way off topic and we'll jump right back into Mike's dream sequence here. <laughs> but the opening sequence to Harley Davidson and the Marlboro Man Yes. With Don Johnson and Mickey Rourke is undoubtedly one of the most badass, yeah. manliest fucking opening to a movie I have ever seen. It is, god dang, it's fucking sick. Dude, what- Makes you want to just- fucking be a badass man it it was just the intro alone is worth the purchase of the movie yeah because the movie's not that great what was it done in 80s or 90s early 90s so early 90s but it's like early night especially harley davidson's side yeah of it which is don johnson no it's not are we oh no mickey Rourke. Okay. yeah his side of it is like perfectly translated 90s film noir yeah it's badass if you get into fragrances for the vibe yeah and the aura that they kind of create visually it's pretty badass yeah i'm not saying the rest of the movie's that good (laughs) but that opening sequence is well worth the price of admission it's unreal all right now let's get back into your dream Mm -hmm. motorcycle mid-30s long hair blue jean jacket God, now I'm thinking of Bon Jovi. <laughs> oh, Lord. I, I'm just going to have to abandon it. <laughs> Either way, I think this is mid-30s. Yeah. This is a great fragrance because it's clean, a little herbal, a yeah. little sweet. This is great for, I'm not going to say mature, mature, but this is a more mature version of a nice, clean, soapy, minty fragrance. Yeah. That if you're in your mid thirties and you're like stylized, looking fresh, yeah, you throw this on. You got a little bit of attitude to you. This isn't straight. I want to smell clean. I'm wearing Sauvage. <laughs> so I want to smell clean, but I also want attitude. Yeah. Honestly, they did great by using Jake Gyllenhaal for this. Oh, yeah. I haven't watched the adverts of it, but I could definitely get that vibe, especially that Nightcrawler. And he's kind of skeezy and Nightcrawler, but <laughs> I could get the Nightcrawler vibe. Yeah. Like somebody like dark, mysterious. Filming people slowly dying in car crashes. Mm-hmm. And then orchestrating car crashes just to film it and be the first one on the scene. What and a, then put it up on the nose. What a dirty, dirty man. <laughs> it was a great movie, too. It was a great movie. (laughs) Man, I'm not saying that Jake Gyllenhaal is underrated. Yeah. Because he's not underrated, but he's a great actor. He is. He's good. What was the movie he did? Jarhead. That was a great movie, too. Yeah. They just want to see the pink mist. (laughs) (laughs) Well, today we got the blue mist. (laughs) (laughs) That's right. Pull your bumper shoots out because this will be misting everywhere. Yeah, this is a great fragrance. I mean, I hate to labor on and on, and we went way off topic, but here's what you get. You got two bumbling idiots from Texas giving you a little podcast love. You're going to get some tangents. I am kind of thrown off by one thing. Hit me. Is that it's called Luna Rosa Ocean, but it's very, it is a green scent to me. Well, it is, but Luna Rosa forest doesn't have as good of a vibe to it name wise i mean i get yeah i guess what would you call it what would you that's a, you know what that'd be an interesting little tidbit if you could rename this whatever you wanted to rename it luna rosa what would it be to you smelling it to your nostrils right now hmm well they've already got luna rosa black luna rosa sport luna rosa carbon so you only get one word to tack on luna rosa God, now I know why these guys struggle so much coming up with names. <laughs> You're sitting in the boardroom with a bunch of CEOs at Prada. Hmm. On the skin. What about like Luna Rosa Midnight? <laughs> Actually, that could have worked. I get why they used Ocean because if you, when I think green, and I'm not saying somebody in the branding committee thought, <laughs> when I think green, I think Irish Springs, but I do. Yeah. And if I'm thinking Irish Spring, Spring, 
river, lake, ocean. What's the deepest, darkest? And yeah. I guess technically it's a blue fragrance. So Luna Rosa, Mariana Trench. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? Now that I've backwards calculated and deconstructed and reconstructed. <laughs> kind of makes sense. I like Luna Rosa Ocean. <laughs> Forgive me. Uh, but I would equally love Luna Rosa Midnight. Yeah. Trademark. You can't take that. It's a pretty baller scent. Okay. Skip it. Sample it. Buy it. What are you going to do, Ryan? Well, I'm probably going to take a little bit off of what you've bought. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, you're definitely getting some decans from this one. But here's what I thought you were going to say. Well, I'm going to wait for it to hit FragranceNet.com and I'm going to buy it at a discount. Man, that does. When I, and I know other people say it all the time. And hell, we've been guilty of saying it in the past, too. It is kind of ash holish to be like, it smells good, but I'm going to wait till it discounts and stuff. Why is that ash holish? I don't know. I just feel like. That's like waiting for happy hour so you can go and get your favorite drink at a discount. I don't know, man. I know people put hard work into things. Sometimes I'm a, I'm a stickler for wanting to pay people what they're worth, I guess. But I don't know if I would buy this straight up right now. I don't know. Yeah, I'm conflicted. I am too, because part of it, I'm, I know it's going to be crazy to say, but part of it does, there's some similarities between this and Elysium that I really do like, especially on the cardstock. Yeah, and it's even like at a, a discount. It's a freshness. Elysium is still top dollar. Man, Elysium just smells ridiculous. On the card, I do kind of smell the Elysium connection. Yeah, it's like a little bit of something there. It's like, it's just a little something they pulled away from there. It's great. There's great body to it on the skin. There's interesting characteristics popping off of the strip. I think it's one that you spray it on your chest before you throw your shirt on, then you hit the shirt with a couple sprays too. Oh, for sure. And you're going to get the best of both worlds. It kind of smells sporty to me in a sense. Well, because it smells clean. Yeah. We've kind of talked about that. Like the cleaner fragrances, to me, I would label as sport, even though there is a Lunarosa sport out there. Okay. I would sample this. That's going to be what I'm going to say. That's my verdict. Sample. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you, I say sample it as well. And if you're like us, we live in kind of smaller towns. Our Dillard's and all that stuff, they don't even have it yet on the yeah. shelf. Mark's pretty good about getting stuff up on the website yeah. faster than most local retailers. So yeah. if you struggle with finding it out there, he does have it. And he was probably the quickest to have it I've seen. Yeah. So myfragrancesamples.com, you can get a sample of it and try it out. Get you a five mil so you get, you know, four or five wares out of it, just really spraying it on. And if you like it, get out there and buy it. It is interesting. It's making me think, man. That's why I definitely want to sample it again. I really want to lace up on it, and I may just do that with your bottle. Yeah, for sure. Saying it on air so you can't not let me do it. As <laughs> soon as I hit stop, I'm going to be like, complete asshole to you. Like, Good thing this is mine. <laughs> now, when we do it for the show, we have to share five mil. I don't have, I don't have to share a hundred mil. <laughs> Man, it does smell good to me. I really like it. I don't know if I would technically own it yet, though. I would definitely sample it, and it could be an own for some people, and it's kind of sporty, I guess, because it's kind of fresh and clean. Here's what I would say. It's unique. If me and Doc Brown <laughs> got the old flux capacitor reinstated, <laughs> I would probably end up sampling it first. Okay. I'm not upset that I own the bottle. Yeah. Do I like it more than Luna Rosa Carbon, which, I mean, I'm looking at the bottle of that right now, too. I don't think that I love it more than Luna Rosa Carbon. I don't love it more than Luna Rosa Carbon. But just to make sure that I don't milk this one too much, I have that one. And I think I bought it for 50 bucks off Fragrance Net or whatever. Same size. It's a cool looking bottle. I mean, it was a little defective from, <laughs> from Prada straight out of the box. But I like it. Would I buy it again? Eh, probably not. I would probably get a sample of it, and every once in a while, if I got a little hankering for something on the greener side of things, I'd probably just get 10 mil, 15 mil from myfragrancesamples.com. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Yeah, the more I'm thinking about it, dude, that Luna Rosa Carbon is still king for me. Still king of the Luna Rosas. 100%. And that's what, 50 bucks for 100 ml? <laughs> yeah. That's a steal, man. Luna Rosa, I think, means red moon. Does it? Yeah. So, red moon ocean. That's kind of cool. All right. That's today's episode. 
And if you enjoy it and want to let us know, you can, you know, write us emails. Tell us some fun stuff about yourself. You know, like age, sex, location to <laughs> the clone podcast at gmail.com. Wow. Did you really just ask for ASL? <laughs> I sure did. Man, that is creepy as hell, Ryan. <laughs> uh, but that does help us understand who. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it does actually help us understand who. And here's what I'd like to see more from friends of the podcast in your emails. If you've tried fragrances that we're reviewing, let us know what you thought about it. Yeah, for real. And if you get them in quick enough, then in our one night stand review, we can say, hey, you know what? John from Texas said that he really liked Luna Rosa Ocean or Robert from California said, Mike's a fucking idiot for spending that much (laughs) money on that terrible fragrance. (laughs) If they say that, I'm reading that email with freaking joy (laughs) in my voice. (laughs) Yeah. I don't, there's this unhealthy competition Ryan has with me right now with these emails. It used to be once in a great while, Ryan would hit an email up. Now I'm having to make sure no matter what I'm doing, if I see one come through, I got to snag it because, you know, Ryan's on it going, hey friend, how are you doing today? Somehow, someway, I always got to throw a jab at you in my emails, don't I? Man, I didn't used to do that about you when I would write. <laughs> Most of the time, I just, you know, pretend like you didn't exist. But now, <laughs> I'm having to take shots at you just in case you <laughs> add a little rebuttal on the end of that. I know people, when they get their emails, are like, God, these guys hate each other. Yeah. <laughs> Small emails turn into long threads just back and forth. <laughs> and before we know it, the listeners ducked out, and it's just me and you going back at each other. <laughs> Oh, Lord. So if you want to be a part of that action, hit us up, thecolonepodcast <laughs> at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you. And until next time, spray, spray it up, up y'all. y'all.